Hi everyone, welcome to Elite Code by Weekly Contest 88. Oh, okay. So I need to find the number of numbers less than this, which is bisect left. Oh, what's the um, sorted list? Is it add? Okay, I think it's plus one. Bitwise XO of all pairings. The maximum value of i.
Okay, that's AC on all problems in about five minutes. So I can't check the leaderboard yet, but that looks good. Okay, time to go through the solutions. Um, there is a smart way to do this question, but um, like there is a there is an O N solution, but since n is like when n is the length of word but i've coded that solution before and i know it's very prone to small bugs so i have done the n squared way of doing it the n squared way is just i'm just going to take a free a dictionary which is which stores the frequency of each character then for each character in the word i will try deleting it in order to delete it i'll simply decrease the frequency by one then I'm going to get S, which is the set of frequency values. But um, if J is, <coughs> because I subtract one here, it is possible that the frequency of a character in the dictionary is zero. So I only want to consider, um, yeah, I only want to consider frequencies which are non-zero. And then if there's only one unique frequency, then the answer is yes. Um, <coughs> okay, that's the first question. This is the next question. Um, I think there's multiple ways to do this, but the way I've chosen to do this is instead of focusing on the videos that have been uploaded, we'll just focus on the videos that haven't been uploaded. So in my implementation, S is just simply the set of videos that have not yet been uploaded. So initially, I put all of the videos into this set. When I upload a video, I erase it from the set and then we note that the longest prefix is actually just the smallest the smallest video that we haven't uploaded yet, subtract 1. And I think that should be pretty obvious why. For example, if we've inserted 1, 2, and 3, but we haven't inserted 4 yet, then obviously 4 will be the smallest element of the set of unuploaded videos. And um, just to make sure that this set isn't empty, instead of just appending the first n videos to the unuploaded set, I am actually adding n plus 1 videos, and that way if I've uploaded every video, um, then the answer should be n, and that works because the first element, s.begin here, is just the smallest element of the set, then the smallest element will be n plus 1, subtract 1 equals n, which is what I want. Okay. Now there's this question. Okay, let's, let's just walk through an example. Say we have like something like this. Now imagine like um, I wrote out for each of the numbers in nums3, I wrote out, I wrote it out as the bitwise XOR of two elements in nums1 and nums2. For example, um, if this was nums1 and this is nums2, then the elements in nums3 are 1 XOR3, 1 XOR4, 1 XOR5, 2XOR3, 2XOR5, 4, and 2XOR5. And then um, the bitwise XOR of all integers in numbers 3 is the bitwise XOR of all of these numbers that I've just written down. Now the key thing to note is that uh, if we look at this 3, for example, how many times is this 3 going to appear in this you know, out of these numbers that I've written down? Well, this 3 will be matched against all of the numbers in nums1. So since nums1 has length 2, there will be exactly two 3s in this, in this array. And similarly for this 4, will, the 4 will appear twice and the 5 will be, appear twice. And this, this means that when the length of nums1 is even, then for each element in nums2, it will appear an even number of times. And one of the properties of bitwise XOR is if you take the same number and XOR it with itself, and if there's an even number of copies of it that you're bitwise XORing together, you're going to end up with zero. For example, like if you take any X and you bitwise XOR it like two, four, six, eight times, you're going to end up with zero. Why? Because we can group, we can group each of these X's into pairs and each of these pairs will have a bitwise XOR of 0. So of course the full thing will have a bitwise XOR of 0. And now there's the other case. What happens if one of the lists... Let, let's, look, let's look at this one. How many times is this one going to appear? Well, it's going to appear three times because that's the length of nums2. 
And I've chosen this such that num2 has an odd length, which means that this one will appear an odd time, odd number of times. And another property of um, bitwise XOR, if you take the number x and you bitwise XOR it with itself like an odd number of times, then you're going to end up with x. Uh, again, we can like pair, you can pair all of all of the x's up apart from one. All of these pairs will have a bitwise XOR of zero, so we'll be left with just one x left over. Now we can finally solve the problem. Um, since if one of the lengths, if nums1 is even, then we can forget about the contribution of elements in nums2. But if nums1 is odd, then uh, each of the elements in nums2 will contribute towards the total bitwise XOR once. And then likewise, um, by symmetry, if nums2 has an odd length, then we do the same for nums1. And that's the answer. OK. Here's the final question. Let's let's look at the condition. The condition is nums one take take uh, nums nums one j is less than or equal to nums two i minus nums two j plus diff. Now the first thing I'm going to do is rearrange this. Um, I can rearrange it to get this. Uh, yeah. I think this should be, this should be J. Oh, I've gone them the wrong way around. Okay, it, it looks like this. I can rearrange the given equation to get this. And that means that if for each index, we simply, if we create an array A, like if we create an array A where AX is equal to nums1 minus nums2i, now we need to, the problem is reduced to finding the number of indices i, j, such that um, I think a, i is less than or equal to a, j plus diff. And the way I'm doing this is just, uh, and, and we also have to have uh, i less than or equal to j. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to iterate through all prefixes of this array a, and I'm going to keep a sorted list um, L, which is the values of A in the prefix I've seen so far. Then for a given index, first I calculate current. Current is really equal to current is equal to AI here. And then now I need to add to my answer how many elements in L are less than or equal to current plus diff. That's what I want to answer because basically in terms of this IJ thing, this i is this this really should be j like to make this clear like i can make this j we are saying for a current index j how many i's have i seen before seen so far that satisfy the condition and as it turns out it's just the elements which are less than current plus diff plus 1 so i'm just using a binary search over this sorted list which is bisect left in python and then finally, I add uh, the element of A into my sorted list um, because, remember, the sorted list stores the values of A in the prefix that we've considered so far. So after I finish considering this prefix, I need to add the element of A into the sorted list. And yeah, that's it. OK, time to check the standings. Please. Yes, let's go. 524, not even close. That's like three minutes ahead of second place. And um, so I'm ranked, um, I'm ranked number two, but after this contest, um, I think I will be ranked number one after this contest. Uh, I wonder if this, yeah, this, this does have a leak code China. So sometimes the leaderboards don't sync very fast, but yeah, I'm extremely happy with this. Um, maybe I'm not sure if I'm going to risk doing tomorrow's contest because that might bring me back down below rank one, but Anyways, I'm very happy and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.